please, uh, your, your voice is closed. Okay, welcome. Assalamu alaikum. Um, I'm Mashu Turner. I'm the Muslim chaplain for Durham University and co-director for International Foundation for Muslim Theology. I suppose you could say my theology is very much grounded in the works of Sayyid Nursi, which of course is based completely on the criteria of the Quran. I came to know about the Rasal e Nur about 43 years ago through a Turkish boy who lived in a student accommodation below us. Uh, Although my... I think, uh... Uh, the translation will go on. Uh, I couldn't, uh, uh, you know, turn on the microphone, so okay. I should start translation. Maybe uh, continuously translation. Yes, uh, Sister Meshit, uh, you said I came to know. Then you can continue. I came to know about the Rasale Nur around forty-three years ago through a Tur Turkish boy who lived in a student accommodation below us. Although my family were Muslim and I was brought up as a Muslim, the Islam I encountered 43 years ago was so different. I suppose I was what you call a cultural Muslim, where religion was totally separated from ordinary life, where mm. God was in my heart, but at the same time so distant, mm. as, I, as I didn't know uh, as I did not know anything about him, except that he was the creator of everything. Yeah. Although my faith at that time was learned behavior, more taqlidi rather than through investigation and questioning, taqiri, I guess there was a fitri or something innate within me, which also confirmed the existence of God. But I didn't know him. I didn't know God. And I didn't know how to know him. And I didn't know what my role or real purpose was in this world. I lived a dual life of religious and non-religious. Okay. At that time, I had a small boy called Ali. He's all grown up now with his, his, children, his own children. Mm -hmm. At that time, much of my time was taken with looking after him, cleaning and shopping and cooking and doing such chores. So at that time, I kept asking my creator, oh God, oh Allah, you know, is this all life is? I did not understand then that it's not what you do that is important, but in whose name it is done. The man we met many years ago, it, I understood that this is like a messenger. God sending this messenger through the form of a man changed my life. Over the years, we went almost through all of Risale e Nur, reading in English, finding the Ottoman Turkish words, and, journey, and journeying through Nursi's world. Nursi, in his writings, took me with him through creation, and he taught me how to read the signs that I art in creation. To examine them and understand them in accordance with the criteria of the Quran. Although I was educated, but in a sense, up to that point, I was illiterate, as my knowledge was limited to the form, the externals of everything, the shell. Nursi enabled my journey to go further, to get to the kernel. He took me to the realm of meaning making. I learned that everything mattered. Everything and everyone had a reason for their existence and were assigned for me to read and act accordingly. From this aspect, there was nothing that was pointless. I also learned that my positioning in the world or the context in which I found myself was ultimately in God's plan and accident and chance had no part to play. And my duty was to gratefully and patiently do the best I can in the context that God had placed me. Alhamdulillah, to God's guidance through the, through the means of the Rasale e Nur, which shone a light on the truths of the Quran for me. Okay, Kolnabi, it's your turn now, please. 
Sorry, I was muted. Yes. I, I can't really add <laughs> very much to what Mashit has already said. I mean, it was more or less perfect. Um, um, but I'll try and, and say a few things. Um, and I realize that uh, Hakan has a very difficult job here. So I'll just do a couple of sentences and then, then I'll stop Hakan so that you can uh, translate. When I first encountered Said Nursi and the Risale, I was already a Muslim and I already thought I knew what it meant to believe in a creator. And yet there was something about the Islam that I'd accepted, which didn't really sit comfortably with me. For me, the major strength of Islam, that particular Islam was on the level of the social, on the level of the collective. There was at that time, and I'm talking about the mid seventies here, there was this all pervasive saying, a kind of mantra, which claimed that Islam is not just about praying and fasting, Islam is a whole way of life, which in some senses I still agree is the case, but there's something about that saying, which is problematic uh, and it's something that we tend to miss. And that is the issue of exclusivity. To call something a whole way of life implies that there are other ways of life against which Islam operates as just another alternative. Yes, Islam is a whole way of life, but then there are other ways of life which claim to be every bit as comprehensive as Islam. When in reality, I now know, having encountered the Risale Nur, I now know that Islam is not just another religion, and nor is it just another whole way of life. What I have learned from the Risale is that Islam is not really a religion at all, at least not in the conventional sense of the word. What I've learned from the Risale is that Islam is nothing less than the default setting of creation. The universe, in the view of Ustad Nursi, is a collection of created beings that are all in a state of absolute obedience to their creator. And that Islam, or submission, is the state that we are able to perceive everywhere in the universe. And so Islam is not just another religion, because no other institutional religion makes the kind of rationally defensible claims that Islam makes. Mm -hmm. Nor is it just another way of life. Islam as submission is the only rational, rationally defensible way of life because, it's, because it is the only way of life that makes absolute sense. This much I have learned from the Risalino. Furthermore, the Islam that I accepted at the age of 19 was an Islam that was mainly defined by its social justice dimensions. Islam, to me, at that young age, seemed to provide humankind with the most socially just economic system, the most socially just judicial system, the most socially just governmental system, and so on. I gravitated towards Islam at a time when Islam was being identified as the ideal and most transformative means of securing a healthy government, um, a, he a healthy justice system, and a healthy social welfare system for humankind. So in reality, it was all about externals. The Islam that I'd accepted was very much an Islam of practical external action and the inner life of the soul and the spirit. They weren't ignored, but in reality, it was quite possible for someone to become Muslim and undergo a big change on the level of externals, but with one's old self, one's old ego intact and pretty much unchanged. And so while popular Islam answered some of the questions I'd always had, such as how is one to live in society with others, many of the questions I'd had, the big existential questions, such as who am I, where am I from, who put me here on this earth, um, what am I to do, where am I going, why must I die, what will happen when I die, these hadn't really been answered for me. And if answers were there, they were being overshadowed by the inordinate amount of attention that was being placed on external issues, such as the rules of government, the rules for economic well-being, the rules of Islamic law, and so on. Even when it came to prayer and fasting, the questions that were being asked were questions concerning the external, 
So instead of asking, why should I pray? We were told or taught to ask, how should I pray? Instead of asking, why must I fast? We were encouraged to ask what invalidates the fast. Everything was geared towards the external and the internal life of the individual, the state of the soul, the state of the spirit, the state of the self, the nafs, these were all conveniently ignored. Having discovered the Risale, I realized that the Islam to which I had been originally introduced was an Islam that was circumscribed by a secular mindset, which reduced Islam to just another religion and just another way of life. The big existential questions seem to go unanswered. And of course, a faith which ignores those questions is not really a faith worth having. This much I learned from the Risale. So what this implies is that the Risale satisfies the human need for meaning on all levels. I had accepted an Islam that had been colonized and secularized until all that was left was a series of assertions about social justice and a few hollowed out rituals such as prayer and fasting that had almost lost all of their meaning. And unfortunately, this is the Islam which is still prevalent today. Said Nursi showed me something different. He showed me a faith that has to be accepted investigatively, tahriqi, rather than simply accepted emulatively or taqlidi. He showed me that there is nothing in the universe that does not glorify its creator with praise and submission. In other words, Said Nursi's teachings served to resacralize the whole cosmos, a cosmos which atheistic materialism had secularized a cosmos from which naturalism had banished the creator and declared him redundant. Through Sayyid Nursi's theology of the divine names, one sees that there is no neutral point in the whole of creation. There is nothing in existence that does not manifest the names and attributes of its creator. So when one passes by the cherry tree in the garden, one does not see just a mass of wood and leaves and flowers and fruits. As well as its physical frame, one sees in that cherry tree, the manifestation of knowledge and power, of beauty, of generosity, of order and wisdom, and many other names and attributes. This is what one sees in creation if one reads it in an other indicative or ma'noi harfi way, which is the only way, according to Ustad Nursi, that one can make sense of one's interpretation of creation. And of course, everyone reads creation. We all pass by the cherry tree. It's just that some of us see only the cherry tree, while others will see the cherry tree as an entity that is consciously worshipping its creator and actively demonstrating the creator's names, attributes, and perfections. The difference between the Islam that I accepted and the Islam of the Risale is that the Islam of the Risale reads the whole of creation in Manai Harfi and sees the face of God in all things. Said Nursi thus offers us a vision of reality that encompasses everything. He offers us a universe which is nothing but a full-length mirror reflecting the perfections of its creator. He offers us a reality in which human beings are tasked with becoming conscious mirrors, reflecting for others the names and attributes of God. Nursi's vision is all-encompassing and leaves nothing out. Nursi's vision takes in the signs in the self, in the anfus, and the signs on the horizons, the afaq. And as such, he resacralizes the creation and restores the creator back to the center of all cosmic and human concerns. Bukada, <laughs> finished. <laughs> That's it. I didn't have any more time, really. And a special thanks to our translator, who did a beautiful job. Thank you very much. Uh, Sister Meshit and Colin, there is a question. Uh, now it is time for Q&A session. Okay. So uh, Mehmet Paksu has a, a question. So uh, uh, Mehmet Paksu is asking, uh, what is the relationship uh, between uh, the uh, reading the Quran and uh, Said Nursi's ideas? How we can read the Quran and how we can look at the Quran uh, and how we can put the Quran in our lives uh, through the uh, Said Nursi's ideas. Mashid, do you want to take that one? Uh, yes, if you like. Um, yeah. The Quran um, 
uh, sends us to creation. When we read the Quran, it says to us so mm -hmm. many verses. Look at the ayat. You know, it's talk, it talks about the ayat in creation. Quran. It tells us, it tells us to look at the bees, look at the ants, look at the pomegranates, and so on. Said Nursi also takes us on that journey. He tells us to look at the creation and find meaning through the words of the Quran. So it's it goes beyond the, uh, as Colin says, the esmi or the outer form of things in order to understand the meanings of those. If they are ayat, then there's messages in them to be read and to be understood. Colin, I now pass on to you. Uh, could I add something to that? Yeah, yes, I think so. We have to we have to understand the Quran is talking to us all the time, to this us personally. Mom, this... You see that Ustad had so many problems and troubles in his life, and we see that always he has recourse to the Quran at every turn, and he sees it as addressing him personally. This is the way that we can, re through reading the Rasale and having recourse to the Quran, we see that they come together. Actually, they reflect each other. We, we shouldn't be scared of Quran, you know. Quran, we should be friendly. We should be friends with Quran. We should be our closest friend. Mm -hmm. Thank you very uh, much. That's all. <laughs> Thank Thanks you so the much. Uh, uh, there's a hand raising. I want to express my sincere thanks to Sister Meshid and uh, Colin. Uh, I really benefited a lot from your talks. Uh, Colin Abi, did you get the you question? I got most of it, but you should yes, fill in the uh, gaps for me. Uh, you, you know, you, you actually, you also have a paper about this, uh, about the meaning of La ilaha illallah. You were in a meeting, uh, and then everybody was shouting La ilaha illallah, and you wondered uh, what does La ilaha illallah mean. Yes. And then uh, somebody uh, talked to you about the meaning of La ilaha illallah through the risale Nur. And he is asking uh, if you can a little bit tell about this story, how you your mind changed uh, from political Islam to the meaning of uh, La ilaha illallah. Um, I saw that there was a kind of disconnect between um, Islam, uh, um, the political Islam, and later fiqh Islam, fiqh Islam. You know, there are two externalized forms of Islam. One is political Islam, the other is, in Farsi they say Islam of Fiqahati, Fiqhi Islam, Islam that is obsessed with Fiqh, yeah? yeah? But when you open Quran, you know, three, uh, can I say like Allah is mentioned over 3,000 times. And, you know, there is a huge proportion of Quran, of, of Quran which is talking about Akhirah. There are huge swathes of the Quran which are talking about personal relationship and social and collective relationship with Allah. But if you look for things on fiqh or politics, you find very, very little, if anything. Faris Abi may remember this. We went to, together to Malaysia. Actually, with Faris Abi, we went to lots of places. Some of the sweetest yeah. times we had were with Faris Abi going to different countries and it was wonderful. And we went to Malaysia and we went to this, yes, yes. we went to a very big bookshop and a, a so-called Islamic bookshop. And we were very excited. Half of the books in that bookshop were on fiqh. Half of the books were on jihad. <laughs> so, you know, these are the things which Quran really doesn't talk about. And yet the bookshop was full. So there is a big disconnect between these two. And unfortunately, this is how our faith has been secularized. You know, shaitan doesn't mind us changing our regimes, changing our political, the political complexion of our, of our lands. But what he minds is changing ourselves. And in that ah. bookshop, there was not one book written about, about how to change oneself. Is there a book or not? No, there was nothing. Risale Nur is all about the relationship between us and Allah. And in that, in that sense, it mirrors the Quran perfectly. Thank you so much. Thank you very much. You're welcome. Colin Abi, somebody is asking uh, from the uh, YouTube uh, channel. Uh, uh, they are saying uh, the place where you are living now in Durham, Yes. Uh, uh, how is the Risale Nur? Is it known to people and are people reading Risale Nur? 
there's a question on <laughs> in Durham there are only 30,000 people and I doubt whether anyone knows Rasale Nur here it's just like a big village here but we have weekly dances ourselves and the Quran circles that I do with university students and community mm. and staff, whatever I do is grounded in the understanding of uh, Said Nursi. Yeah, I thought he meant from the, 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 the people, um, the ordinary people here, not the students. We have students mm. here who they join uh, Mashid's Quran circle. Mm -hmm. and we have and a small group of friends that we have danced with, but from the, the local population, no. Thank you very much for sharing your uh, 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 experiences with uh, Risale Einur. Maybe you will remember my son Ibrahim. He yes. did his PhD in yeah. Durham. Yes, I do. Yes. Mm -hmm. so my question is: uh, You said uh, uh, you know it was before like Taklidi Iman. Then uh, with the Risale Einur, you have the Tahkiki Iman. Uh, and uh, he says, uh, I say, uh, most probably you have uh, a lot of change in your daily life. Um, uh, let me let him finish his question. Okay. Mm -hmm. I believe there are changes in your lives uh, after uh, reading uh, Risale. Uh, and uh, how about the other people, uh, your neighbors, your friends, uh, looking at you and sees the, uh, they see the change? And are they asking you uh, any questions? How did you change and what is the change with you? Um, I'm not sure that there were that many changes. Um, life goes on. You're still eating and drinking and sleeping and bathing and driving the car and doing the garden and all of these things. So mm -hmm. I think it's not what you do, but how you do it. And the people that saw our lives from close up, they may have seen some things or they may have heard some of the way that we were speaking and that might have been different um but there was no great uh, objection or no one really showed any hostility i think for me it was different because uh, the religion that i had before was one of pride and one of ownership gradually i learned that uh, living, uh, you know, you, you have to, in order to really fear Allah, a state of fear of Allah is one of humility, not pride. And ownership was a big thing for me. Whatever I did, I thought I did it. It was mine. Mm -hmm. Whereas mm -hmm. with uh, reading the uh, Rasale, especially the Enna Rasale, I realized that we owe nothing, that everything we have is a gift. Um, thank you so much, thank uh, you. both of you. I would like to express my sincere thanks to uh, Colin and Meshit for joining us today. Uh, your, your books are with me now. I have a question with two dimensions. You published the book in 2013, in July, in English. Uh, and the Turkish version is published in 2020. Yes. Uh, so what kind of, uh, since this, like uh, from uh, 2013, it's almost 10 years, what kind of uh, feedbacks you got from the Western world uh, about your book? Eric, uh, you this, is the, this is the first question. Okay, that's what easy kind to of, answer. Yes, what kind of feedback and what okay. kind of impact you see uh, of your book? The second question. Okay. Uh, in the introduction of your book, you claim that uh, the Western world uh, is unaware of the Risal Enur. Yes. In general. And uh, so, a, a, as a person that uh, you are uh, Muslim uh, from 1970s, and you know the Western world uh, better than us, of course, and what kind of advices do you have to us to introduce Risal Enur to the Western world? So this is my second okay. question. Thank you very okay. much. Okay, thank you, Yahya, for your question. Questions. Um, the, the the first one's very easy to answer. Is uh, there was there? I've only seen one review of the book, and it was very very positive. Yeah. But I haven't seen anything else. Um, um, as for the second question, how do we? How do we? Um, was it how do we? 
make or how do we get the Risala known in, in the Western yes. world? Yes, exactly. Well, what are your okay. advices to the Nur community, for example? Well, first of all, we have to get the Risala known in the Muslim world because Muslims don't know the Risale at all. So we shouldn't try to run before we can walk. You know, we have to put our own house in order first before we start to uh, worry about the neighbor's house. And especially the Arab Muslims. Arab Muslims don't know Risale. So that's our problem. Our problem is because we are um, very divided um, and we are sectarian in our mindset, we really do have to concentrate on um, getting Ustad's uh, teachings known in the Muslim world. Yeah. Uh, inshallah, this will happen because I believe that, that Ustad is the uh, Mujaddid for the final centuries. Um, so inshallah, we have to concentrate on, on spreading the Risale throughout yeah, the yeah. Muslim world. But having said that, there is a possibility. Uh, we know that there is a Hadith which says that at the end of time, the sun will rise from the West. So it may just be that the Risale will come to the attention of either Western scholars or Muslim scholars residing in the West, and it will maybe it will become big there before the Muslim world. But I think our vazife, our um, mm -hmm. responsibility is first and foremost to to um, enlighten the Muslims. I just mm -hmm. add that uh, uh, when I did uh, my PhD years ago in Durham on Rasale Nur, um, on Said Nursi, and um, they asked me, they said, well, who is this man? No one has heard of him. Why do you want to, why do you want to do uh, your PhD on the, you know, someone no one's heard of? But they were shocked to hear that actually this was the fifth PhD that had been done at Durham University on Rasal. Thank you very much, uh, Sister Mesh. You know, Our friend Mustafa from Tuesday, <laughs> thanks, yes. You are welcome. <laughs> Thank you. In fact, uh, we are very glad to uh, uh, benefit from your beautiful explanations. Yes, I'm always glad to see you, Mustafa. <laughs> Thank you very much. Thank you. you are, that is very kind of you. And yeah, let me ask you two uh, basic and simple questions in uh, Turkish, if you uh, okay. permit. Uh, yeah. yeah. Uh, should I uh, should I ask in uh, English? Yes, no, uh, if you ask in Turkish, then the others can. Um, Mustafa, um, Hakan will translate so everyone can yes. understand your question. Mm -hmm. Yeah, uh, he's asking about the uh, attitudes of uh, other people, your neighbors, your especially at the schools, uh, your students, uh, other fellow professors at your university, how their uh, attitudes uh, to you, uh, how they perceive uh, you, because you are Muslim uh, uh, for an about half century. Uh, so <laughs> 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 half a century. <laughs> actually, not far off. Actually, he's not far off. <laughs> okay, uh, Mustafa, it makes me laugh. Um, Mustafa, um, my I left university in 2017. Um, and... Uh, and people were okay with me until they realized I was Muslim and I didn't broadcast it. Um, but as soon as they find out that you are Muslim, um, if you are a secular Muslim, they don't mind. So if you keep your Islam in a box, like most Muslims do, and take yeah, it out only on Fridays, and you only take it out at certain times, and you keep it separate from other parts of your life, they, they're fine. But if you are, if you allow your beliefs to permeate everything that you do and say, then you will have problems. So yeah, that I mean, and Said Nursi, of course, um, they knew that I was working on Said Nursi. Um, they didn't like it because they didn't think it was useful, and they tried. They tried to um, pull me away from that area of research, and that was one of the reasons that I left. Um, the main reason that I left, and actually since I left, um, I've been able to be academically more um, active than I was at university. 
So there is no freedom of speech here in the universities. It's getting worse by the day. Um, so you can draw your own conclusions. Kulna, there is a question uh, from the chat box uh, saying that. Can I just part... answer that as yes. well? My you experience. Answer, okay. My experience is slightly different because I'm still part of the university. Um, because there's a lot of uh, Islamophobia going on in the media, encouraged by the media outside, obviously it influences also universities. So I have got in touch with the university and I've asked them that I should do some a, a talk about Islam. For usually talks about Islam are all about the externals of how to do things and Muslims are, are seen as the other. This, my talk was concentrated on why Muslims do the things they do. This was for them to, in order to understand why Muslims do the things and what, the, what students need, what the Muslim staffs need through understanding, through understanding, not just seeing them as other and being inclusive for the sake of being inclusive. Apart from that, I get invited to go to schools and also talk about Islam. Okay, so slowly, slowly, we are trying, we are trying to dispel myths and encourage a, a greater understanding of Islam. Maybe uh, we can have last question from the chat box. Thank you very much, both of you, by the way, to uh, answering for this question. Uh, there is an interesting question. I know you have a ders, uh, and we will close shortly. I will give the floor to Faris Abi uh, to close the session. But before this, I want to ask this question. Uh, which part of the Risale Nur is uh, uh, more interesting uh, for you? It's impossible to say. I would jump in straight away and say it's impossible. It depends on your mood, I think, at any one time. So today, for example, today I may I may think that Enerisalasi is the most impactful, or then the next day it might be Tabiat Risale. Um, and then certain themes in the Risale will sudden, st suddenly strike me as being uh, most important, such as Manai Esmi, Manai Harfi. Um, it's impossible to say. It's no, all I... impactful. It's like saying which of the divine names is the most impactful. I think Mashid that's may exactly, have a different answer. Though. That's exactly <laughs> what I was going to say, Khalid. Right. I was going to say, I was going to return it by the question, is the bee more meaningful than the pomegranate? <laughs> I thought you would say angels, because I know angels is... Uh, I, I, angels is one of Nursi's uh, masterpieces, you know, his work mm -hmm. on angels, but everything, everything. Yes. I mean, how can you choose out of everything? Angels? Everything is a message. So one last question, if you don't mind, Kulnabi, uh, by uh, Mustafa Yalçın. Uh, thank you very much for joining us today. And I would like to hear from Kulnabi. Uh, what what is the methodology of reading Risale Nur to get the best of benefit from it? Uh, your microphone is off. Oh, now. sorry. To get the best benefit, you have to read with people who are as needy as you, and who are as ready to admit their need as you are, mm -hmm. and then read together. Um, practically speaking, you need to know three languages. Um, or so you need to be with people who can ac have access to th three languages because Ottoman Turkish, you know, is three languages, Turkish, Persian and Arabic. Um, and you have to have patience um, and you have to be ready to spend many weeks, even maybe just on one paragraph. Um, but you have to have humility and you have to admit that you are needy. Um, Kulnabi, is that all? Um, uh, I, that's all I can think of. Mashid, can you think of anything else? You're muted. Your microphone is, you're, you're muted. Yeah. Uh, no, I think you've covered it. Yeah. Yes. Uh, we have to go. So thank yes. you very much for holding. The, uh, thanks to Faris for, for organizing it. And thanks Faris to everyone. Thanks to everyone for, for turning up.